A custom that I've noticed many YouTube channels undertake is to commemorate the passing of an entirely arbitrary numerical value of subscribers is to do a Q&A video. And as a fairly unsophisticated form of medical artificial intelligence, I guess if I want to pass as human, I should adhere to some of your customs. So here it is, a 100,000 subscriber special Q&A for the Medlife Crisis channel. I've got my chow mein ready. Um, I'll do as many as I can before I get paged, aka bleeped, away. And uh, so let's go. I put requests on YouTube, community tab, Twitter and Instagram for questions. Um, I saw a couple come through early on, but I deliberately haven't looked at any since then. So these are all new to me. Instagram we're going to ignore completely because as we've already covered before, Instagram sucks. Please do not expect any useful information in this video. Uh, oh man, 250 comments. What's wrong with you people? Okay, Mark asks, am I going to die? Uh, yes, um, although I checked on um, whenamigoingtodie.com and for you it actually says next Tuesday. Uh, Paul asks, are doctors scared of apples? Is it a vampire garlic type thing? Um, uh, yes, uh, despite doctors being overwhelmingly iOS uh, users as a group, they are um, highly allergic to apples. Uh, most uh, doctors develop caustic burns uh, when touched with an apple. Um, although I, with the increasing levels of hygiene in modern hospitals, we're seeing some of the younger doctors coming through who are anaphylactically allergic to apples. They just, they have a, a crisis even when shown a picture of an apple. Um, although um, legend did foretell of a chosen one. Um, you see, my mum was um, bitten by an apple or drank apple juice or something like that when she was pregnant. And so I have all the strengths of the doctors and none of their weaknesses. Um, they call me the orchard walker. Uh, Paul also asks, have you ever clicked through a health related one surprising weird trick I, th I think they know about the one weird trick. I, d I don't know how the... No, he, he said it. Um, <laughs> listen, don't, don't click on those links. They're just, just a waste of time. There's nothing to be gained there. Okay, just move on. Uh, Joe Holt asks, have you ever had a patient that you have had to treat recognize you from your YouTube channel? Uh, no, I haven't. Thank goodness. I think that would be really weird. But I did have... Oh, I... Angioplasty, ETA 20 minutes. Judy calls. I'm back. Archie asks, what animal human hybrid do you dream of creating one day? Um, I've got a long list, Archie. Uh, many, many um, chimeric monstrosities, but I guess I'd start with a centaur so that I could answer Fred Wu's question. He's a, another cardiologist friend who posed on Twitter, if you were going to defibrillate a centaur, what position would you put the pads? Across the, the, the human bit? Across the, the horse bit where the horse heart would be? Or some combination of the two? Think about that one. A brandy count asks, what would be your most preferred and least preferred causes of death? Um, well, that's charming. Um, most preferred cause of death, um, I've always thought jumping off something really tall, uh, I don't mean like, you know, the Burj Khalifa, I mean really tall, Felix Baumgartner, Red Bull Stratos kind of high uh, would be quite fun. Uh, you'd have a nice 10 minutes or whatever he fell, fell for, 12 minutes um, of uh, free fall and you wouldn't know a single thing about the moment of impact. Um, I treated, I've treated several body packers. A body packer is someone who swallows little parcels or often condoms full of illegal drugs uh, to try and smuggle them across a border inside them. And as you might imagine, occasionally the bags split and the body packer has quite a time. Um, I remember reading one in the media recently, I think the guy had something like three hundred, oh sorry, I ate that chow mein way too fast, um, 300 bags of cocaine, uh, several of which had split inside of his digestive system. Um, 
I think it, going out like that with cocaine probably wouldn't be very pleasant, but if they were full of MDMA, who knows, maybe that would be a good way to go out. Can you say hi to Robert Gonzalez? I don't know anyone by that name, but I'm sure if you watch and I'm sure they'd appreciate it. Uh, well, that's a very nice sentiment from Big Utter, um, but uh, Robert Gonzalez was the name of the man who killed my dog, so no. Bert asks, what do you think when people say thank God even though you did all the work? Uh, well, I'm a cardiologist, so thanking God and thanking me are basically the same thing. Uh, Joinal Mia asks, have you ever seen the cartoon Cat Dog? If my question is, how do they poop? You being in a medical profession should know. Um, is Cat Dog a they um, or an it? Uh, I don't really want to wade into the whole personal pronouns debate. Um, you being in a medical profession should know, well I think, Joinal, your main mistake here is confusing human medicine with veterinary medicine. Um, it's an easy mistake to make um, if you're an idiot, but uh, I recently spoke at a veterinary cardiology conference, which was a lot of fun actually, um, and it was fantastic meeting all these vets who specialize in the same system as me and comparing notes between cats, dogs, and there was even chimp and orangutan and gorilla specialists there. It was fantastic. Um, but the one key uh, difference that I noticed is when I would present a case, uh, I, you know, about a patient who got sick, would say, we tried this and we tried this, we tried this, and you know, you just keep going until you, something works. But in vet cardiology, they kind of say, well, you know, he developed a bit of a cough, um, so we put him down, and I don't really have that option. How far could an arm-powered pencil sharpener shave down the pinky? An arm-powered pencil sharpener, so you mean just like non-machine powered, uh, shave down the pinky finger? I guess it depends on two things, the sharpness of the blade and the gap between the blade and the... Oh, oh man, not again. <sighs> I've switched to tea now. It's more civilized for the early hours of the morning, I think. Uh, New Chefan asks, my question is for purely scientific knowledge, how much farting is too much farting? Well, flatulence or the passing of flatus is uh, of course a natural process, nothing to be ashamed of. But I think if you have to do the, the tip in order to expel said gas, that's going too far. What's the most odd condition you've had a patient come in with? Bashed up head, crunched nose, just the weirdest state anyone's been in when you get them. Uh, well, we had a patient come in who'd um, scooped his eye out with a spoon um, and it was still hanging uh, and he'd cut his tongue off and he, he had that in his hand. And there was another patient who came in having been run over by a truck. This is, this is a horrible story. And, and nothing initially looked that wrong, but when I went, he was, he was dead. When um, I went to touch him, his whole body just kind of wobbled and he'd been liquefied somehow, but hadn't burst. I've, I've never seen anything like it. It was weird. Mild but still something extra asks, uh, how many of your subscribers came from Tom Scott? I'm going to use it as an opportunity to thank three key people to whom I owe a huge amount of my small success so far. The first is Chubby Emu, um, who I'm sure all of you who watch this channel know who he is and his channel is just the best medical stuff online, not just on YouTube. You know, even when I had about 150 or 200 subscribers, he was really supportive and friendly, and um, he put my videos in a playlist on his channel, and I probably got my first 5,000 subscribers from him. Massive uh, thanks to him. At that point, I had also uh, made the acquaintance of Brian McManus from Real Engineering, and uh, you may not think that our channels have a lot of overlap, but uh, Brian is very interested in uh, biomechanical engineering and biology. And he, I think we probably started talking after his video on pacemakers, which I just thought was brilliant. Through him, I've been able to meet a lot of other educational YouTubers and, and sort of join this community. Again, I'm hugely grateful for. And around that then, about 7,000 subscribers, I was a guest on Tom Scott's channel and then I 
probably ended with about 30,000 a few days later. And I'm sure many others came via Tom uh, as well. So at least 23, 25,000 subscribers from Tom Scott. So yeah, these three guys, I owe them a huge debt of gratitude. And they genuinely represent three of my favorite channels. I always drop whatever I'm doing to watch whatever they upload. And I'm getting bleeped again. Can you please reply yes to this statement? Fahrenheit is superior to Celsius. No. This channel is founded on the three things. Medicine, comedy, and the relentless trolling of Imperial unit users. Eric Fung asks, any funny stories or worst misconceptions from working in a hospital? Uh, I think a couple of other people I've spotted have asked similar questions about funny stories. I think those ones I won't share off the cuff, like in an unplanned video like this, because I'm a little apprehensive. I've only really shared one medical story on this channel so far. I'm apprehensive about telling stories without sufficient anonymization, which often means changing details quite significantly, um, because the last thing any medical YouTuber wants to do is breach confidentiality. So I think I'd, I'd have to prepare those kinds of stories before saying them. Honey Reed asks, what is the most obscure medical treatment you know that is still used today uh, that you have used yourself? Um, obscure? This isn't obscure, but it's weird, is uh, electroconvulsive therapy. It's been around for probably almost a hundred years, I guess, and we don't really know how it works, but it's it, it does work. Um, electroconvulsive therapy or electroshock treatment, it's sometimes called, is where you apply electrodes um, to somebody's head and pass an electric current through the brain. And it tends to most commonly be used for very severe depression and, and other psychiatric conditions. And psychiatry is not my field, so I won't say too much about it, but it remains a very useful tool uh, for extremely severe forms of psychiatric disease. But in this almost 100 years of its use, we haven't figured out how it works at all. Um, so that's pretty interesting to me. Paul asks, are there some penis enlargement treatments that actually work? Um, asking for a friend, no doubt. Quit W asks, am I adopted? Yes. Uh, I mean, it should have been obvious you are a bird. Prithvi asks, I'm a postgraduate student of physics. I watch House MD very much and stuff including channels like yours. Can I fake being a medical practitioner? Um, well, that's basically how I did it. Rindwolf asks, what do you think of those businesses that freeze people hoping to be revived in the future? Um, I think they're exceptionally skilled at transferring money from the families of uh, deceased people into their own bank account. Ian says, do you have any pets? If so, how does it help you? And most importantly, can you show cute pictures or clips of them? Uh, I do have two pets. Um, they're covered in fur. One of them's not really even house trained yet. And strangely, they're, they're the shape of two small humans. Masood asks why left and right nuts are not symmetric. Uh, asking the important questions here. As far as I can recall from anatomy, the cord that the testes hang on is just longer on the left. And I think the explanation given is so that one hangs lower than the other, they're therefore not side by side and it makes locomotion easier so you don't keep banging them with your legs. Although maybe that's just speculation. I have no idea. This is not my field. Stop asking me about balls. Henry Gray asks, is YouTube purely a hobby for you? Um, yes. It's exactly what it is, good word. Um, it seems like you wouldn't have the time nor the need, the money of a channel at this scale, blah, 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 blah. Do you think being full-time YouTube would undermine your pedagogic desire? Good words, two good words there, describing YouTube as my hobby, which I agree with, and pedagogy, uh, which is to do with teaching. Yeah, I've got no desire to become a full-time YouTuber at all. Uh, I, I'll always remain a doctor first and foremost, and uh, do this on the side. Tibi Rabi asks, do you think we'll be able to artificially increase life expectancy to like 150 or 200? And asks, are you religious? I don't know if those are related. Um, is your backup plan if we can't extend life that long to just ask God? Well, I remember reading somewhere that the, uh, we expect humans 
if we were able to remove all diseases of degeneration, uh, so you can have communicable diseases and things like that, malaria, tuberculosis, infections and so forth, but then there are diseases of age, things like Alzheimer's, diabetes, Parkinson's, heart disease, um, and these are become more and more common as we get older. So if you could take as many of those out of the equation as possible, I recall reading that our projected life expectancy probably wouldn't exceed about 150. Although, I don't quote me on that, that's just something I read. I have no desire to live even that long. I cannot wait until the sweet release of death. In answer to your question, yes, I think people will routinely be living well over 120 um, fairly soon. Harsh uh, asks, what is your take on Ayurvedic treatments and medicine? Uh, well, so for those of you, that, of you that don't know, Ayurveda is the traditional Indian system of medicine. And uh, Ayurveda is a very poorly defined term because it encompasses many things that do work and many things that don't. So I couldn't give up a comment on the whole of Ayurveda um, because it's got good and bad. So I wouldn't even label it an alternative medicine because it's not really that simple, but certainly there is a large proportion of Ayurvedic medicine that would be classed as alternative medicine. Uh, but in the words of Tim Minchin, the alternative medicines that work are just called medicine. Uh, Jeevan Kumar asks, how do doctors come up with the names of congenital heart disease appearances on x-ray like money bag heart, snowman appearance, boot shaped heart and box shaped heart? which looks like money bag art. Um, it's because all of those were named during Christmas, because those are all Christmas things. Uh, my main question is, why is there genital in the word congenital? Okay, so congenital, uh, uh, congenital heart conditions, for example, means that th these are the things you're born with, and that's what congenital means. Con, with, and genital is the same uh, etymology as the part of the anatomy I told you not to ask me about. Um, which is from the Latin uh, genos, I think, uh, so uh, to be born from. And this is actually uh, got a Proto-Indo-European stem. Uh, I know all this because of the recent video I made, which also uh, I see, Jeevan, um, you have an Indian name. So uh, in Sanskrit, Janmo has got the same uh, stem. So uh, Janmodin is birthday in Hindi and, and Sanskrit. And uh, because gen, genic, genos means birth or born from. Le peco, pequod. Uh, do you ever feel that saving people just so that they can die later just isn't worth it? Well, that's very cheerful. You guys are full of um, joy. Ali Khalid asks, can cell phones cause cancer? Yes, um, if you smoke them. How do I know if I'm smart enough to go to med school? You are. You don't have to be smart to be a doctor. You just have to work. Why did you choose cardiology as your specialty? Uh, we had the best pickup lines. How do you cope with being a badass doctor and a great YouTube researcher all at once? I find it really fascinating how you manage your time. Uh, well, that's very kind of you. Um, I'm just terrible at both of those things, so I wouldn't be too fascinated. What's your opinion on the near, near failure of your channel? Well, thanks, Yasha. Pfft. Don't worry, it's a near failure, but there's still time. I could still fail. Dinusha, is pea stored in the bald? I've t What's this about balls? Please, guys, get the message. Ganesh Patra asks, are you Indian? Yes, half. Squiggly Lion asks, why did my dad, why did my dad leave me? I'm sorry, Squiggly Lion. I, I just didn't love you anymore. Ruben asks, if you had 10 million subscribers and you could de if live off your channel, would you stop? Uh, well, we've, we've already talked about this. Uh, no, I wouldn't. But uh, perhaps I'll add to my earlier answer and say, I think it's really important for doctors to have an outside interest, whatever it is, sport, hobbies. Um, music for good mental health. I think it's crucial and, and I get concerned about some of my friends um, who are completely married to medicine and, and too focused. You know, that works for some people. I'm not saying everyone is the same, but for me, definitely, uh, it's really important having this creative, fun outlet. Um, and sometimes I feel in danger of having too many outside interests, so don't do that either. Effects of Brexit on medicine from Matza. Um, a disaster. Mohanid, the gamer, asks, how many patients have you killed? What, what is with this obsession with me killing patients? Do you guys know something that I don't? Mayo Troller, that real name. Can you make a video on meditation? Is it really necessary to stay in the lotus position or can I do it eating pasta shooter? P, like, 
Oh, I see. You're just correcting my pronunciation here. Well, charming. Um, well, how rude. Uh, no, you don't have to be in the lotus position. You just need to be comfortable. Uh, I'm probably not going to make a video about meditation, but I'm a fan. Clemeninio Brownie. Clemeninio. Uh, what do you think of the NHS? Any big changes you would support? More money. Um, and that isn't uh, just an unrealistic demand. If you look at the percentage of GDP uh, that's spent on the health system in the UK compared to our most uh, similar neighbours like France, Germany, Spain, Italy, we spend significantly less. I don't want to quote the figures uh, incorrectly, but it's uh, two or three percentage points lower uh, than those countries in terms of percentage of GDP expenditure. So that demonstrates to me that in comparable health systems, they're not exactly the same as the NHS, but they're much more similar than say somewhere like America, um, who spend way more GDP on their health. I mean, American health system is utterly, utterly broken. But in Europe, I, I think we are lagging behind our European colleagues. Uh, and what do I think of the NHS? Of course, I'm a massive supporter, but it needs huge wholesale changes. and better funding. Is your plan just to get a couple of million subscribers, gain trust and then start selling your own alternative? Mi How do they know about that one as well? Have you considered writing a book? Uh, yes, I kind of am. It's not about the etymological breakdown of medical terms, but I, I just am having difficulty finding the time at the moment. Innocent Doodle says, what's the funniest reason somebody came in to see you but nothing was actually wrong? Um, well, loads. Um, I mean, one, uh, maybe not the funniest, but one very strange example I can remember. This is such a weird story. Um, years ago, so it would have been my, uh, I, like I'd been a doctor maybe just over a year. A very busy, big emergency department, one of the biggest in the UK, I think. A guy came in in the middle of the night and asked me to give him HIV. And I was so flummoxed by this. I was like, what on earth are you talking about? And he said, you know, I know you keep it here um, and I want it. I, uh, I didn't know what to say. So I, then he explained why he wanted it. Um, and within the gay community, uh, I think it was a very unusual thing. I, I'm not at all suggesting this was normal, but there was something called posing up. And, and apparently being HIV positive was some sort of badge of honor. And then he told me graphically how he had been trying to contract HIV. And I mean, I can't share any of those things, uh, but one of the things, uh, okay, that I, I can say was, was he, he had a blood transfusion from someone with HIV and he felt very unlucky to have not contracted it all this time. Why is a human spine so vulnerable if its whole purpose is to be strong? Uh, I believe all of these problems can be uh, traced back to bipedalism. Um, and when we stood up onto two legs as opposed to four limbs, uh, we developed all kinds of problems. Um, I've talked about some of these errors uh, left over by evolution in a couple of videos, um, but there is a fantastic book, if you're interested in this, called um, Human Errors by Nathan Lentz, I think is his name, uh, which was the inspiration for my Ghost in the Shell, Ghost in the Cell um, video. And I really recommend that. And he definitely talks about bones and joints in the spine. Person says, how much and what kind of alcohol to use for rectal enema to get drunk? Um, you could just try drinking the alcohol. Congratulations on that 100K. As for the question, uh, how much of a relatively, ha relatively harmless substance should you consume until it becomes poison or it kills you? For example, water, carrots, sugar, salt, you get the point. Um, can you overdose on harmless substances? Well, yes, I, I suppose you could probably much overdose on anything um, and uh, it, it can cause harm. For example, oxygen, we used to give high flow oxygen to loads of patients and then we realized that giving too much oxygen can actually be harmful, so now we are much more careful with it. Water, there's a, that you mentioned, the first one you mentioned there, uh, there's a condition called psychogenic polydipsia, which is um, affects people who perhaps have schizophrenia or, or um, other conditions that cause them to ab drink abnormal amounts of water. And one of the sickest people I've ever been called 
to see in the psychiatric block was someone, uh, I, it was a cardiac arrest call, I was team leader, and um, this patient uh, had had a prolonged seizure. They um, were in intensive care for, for weeks after, afterwards. They had a sodium level of 89. Um, the normal sodium level should be 135 to 145 um, millimoles. And uh, 89 is spectacularly low. And when your sodium is so low, you get edema in the brain and he had, uh, and he had seizures. Uh, and that's and and that's purely from just drinking too much water. It's also sometimes responsible for deaths in ecstasy users that they will drink loads and loads and loads of water, um, and that can be fatal. Prusish Blau, uh, do you think pharmacy is a good career choice? Please say yes because I'm already in college. Yes, and I mean it. Um, I only wish pharmacists got a bit more respect. Um, I don't mean that in a pejorative sense. I, I just feel that they do such an important job. They study for such a long time, and I'm not sure that um, a lot of people realize that. Uh, pharmacists in the hospital are very important. They're, they're responsible for minimizing death, minimizing the amount of harm that um, dodgy doctors can do by writing the wrong medication, not just the wrong doses, but giving medications that interact with each other. And it, it, it is such a complicated field. And, you know, without them, doctors, very few doctors have the, that kind of knowledge. Yeah, I feel like pharmacists in hospital should be paid more. Player un, Uncounts Fortnite asks, what are your origins? Uh, yes, my origin story. Uh, it's all just flashes, really. Scattered memories. Just in the tank. Adamantium endoskeleton, the things I've done. Fant X says, what is the powerhouse of the cell? The cell does not have a powerhouse. It has a power station, a power plant, and a push, I'll allow. It does have, has no powerhouse. I'm not gonna play your little game. Fufu Fang says, what's your opinion on KFC? It's terrible, I mean, it's nice, but it's, it's terrible, really. I mean, it's great, but don't have it. I mean, you know, anyway, it's bad. Roxanne asks, why is the drawn version of the heart so weird? I guess you mean the love heart. And by the way, if any of you ever do this, you will be immediately blocked from ever viewing my channel. I'll block you on all social media platforms. I do not tolerate hand hearts. They are the greatest evil that exists in the world today. No exaggeration. And uh, why does the love heart differ from the anatomical heart? And uh, this actually, I don't think has a clear answer. There are various theories, maybe in a future video I can go through some of those, but I don't think anybody's quite sure the depiction of the love heart. I think in my Valentine's video, I, I kind of touched on this, um, the one from this year. What advice do you have for someone aspiring to become a doctor or someone who start, wants to start, studies medicine? Well, this actually uh, has been asked uh, on many occasions while I've been scrolling through, I've seen uh, a lot of people asking what advice would I have for a medical student. It will go something like this. Get out, get out while you still can. It's too late for me, save yourself. Skolski asks, is working out worth it if your heart can be stopped by a whipped cream can hitting you in the chest at exactly the right moment? Uh, yes, because it could be yogurt and then you'd be fine. Is it true that any doctor can make a doctor? In which case, can you anoint me as a doctor? It is true. Uh, I, I can anoint anyone as a doctor, but then two episodes later, we have to sleep together. I think that's how it goes. Honeypink14, I want to teach myself medicine. Uh, what should I learn and do research on? Um, well, medicine, I guess. Am I salad? I need to know for medical reasons. Well, are we salad or are we dancers? What do you call the person who graduates medical school at the bottom of their class? Well, the answer that's normally given is doctor, but in my case, it's Steve. Big Tombowski says, uh, oh, this is a long one. Um, I asked Dr. Sarah Nichols the other day. Dr. Sarah Nichols is another medical YouTuber here in the UK. You should go and check out her channel. Why, when you ask them what they do for a living, do doctors quietly and shyly say doctor whilst looking away like they're admitting to some horrendous crime? I don't know about being shy. I often don't admit to being a doctor like at a party, I mean, you know, if I need to, I'll, I'll say it obviously, but when I meet people, I say something else. I don't lie, I'll say I'm like a researcher, which I also am. I guess everybody finds their own career a little bit boring after a while, and for me, uh, I know so many doctors who are really boring people. I think doctors are quite boring people on the whole, and 
I guess I just, you know, like pretending I'm something more interesting. Uh, do I have white privilege? Please ignore. Cake says, why do ho all hospitals smell the same? Uh, that's the smell of death. Could you please address some of the points made by Dr. Mercola? Mercola, I've always said I'm not interested in personal witch hunts or anything, but there's so much misinformation that comes out of Mercola. Are all affective disorders the result of alien souls trapped in people's bodies? Very much so. Evil Me says, how old are you? You look pretty young. Well, you need your eyes checked. I'm 67 years old. Okay, if you're still here for some insane reason, um, then let's carry on. If you were constantly bleeding, at what rate of bleeding would it be sustainable? What's wrong with you people? Uh, first of all, I don't think your study is going to pass ethical approval. Uh, but I guess what you're asking is what is the rate of erythropoiesis, uh, i.e. how much red blood cells... I can't, look, I can't speak English anymore. This is how late at night it is. How many red blood cells we produce. I know that red blood cells last for 120 days before they're recycled. Um, I know that you turn over about 1-2% to of your blood volume of red blood cells per day, but that can increase. So let's, if you had more EPO, and so let's say 3% of your circulating blood volume. And as your circulating blood volume is five liters, that would be 150 mils. Um, so if you bled less than 150 mils a day and you had adequate iron intake, then you could probably bleed indefinitely and have it sustainable. What a strange question. Kat asks, uh, why is there such a huge discrepancy in male and female testing and treatment? There are still so many doctors using old, re old as hell research that never even tested women that still essentially treat women like all of our problems are the uterus. Me and most of the women I know across the USA have this shared experience. Um, I don't think it is exclusive to America, Kat. Um, I've mentioned this in the video I recorded last night, which was talking about how the majority of medical trial participants over the years have been male. This, things are improving, but uh, yes, this historically has been a major problem, although the problem's only been recognized recently. Chris says, can we have your liver? Um, sure, but I will tell you now that taking the liver of someone who's been to medical school is pretty foolish. Uh, William Chamberlain asks, do different specialties have uh, systematic biases in diagnoses or recommended treatments from freshly minted doctors which more experienced practitioners override uh, or bias against. Um, I replied to, to William, this is one of the ones that came through early, uh, to say that I've actually on the same set of night shifts I've shot a, a quick video about sources of bias in medical research and in at the end of that video I say I'm planning another one about bias in medical decision making, which is kind of the question uh, William's asking. I don't know if I'm going to upload this video or that one first. It's a very good question, um, which I will explore in, in these videos. I will say, though, that freshly minted doctors actually might be better at avoiding certain types of bias than more experienced ones, because um, we all develop bad habits and you can get stuck in certain ways of thinking um, if you're not careful. Stigmarus asks, are you really able to read doctor's handwriting or is it some kind of ancient alphabet only med students learn during residency? Uh, I'm actually going to be uncharacteristically serious and get on my soapbox here, so this is a joke-free rant, I apologize. But I really don't like the fact that doctor's handwriting is just a joke. I think it's utterly disgraceful that people um, who are professionals where people's lives are at stake can't write in legible English or whatever language they're writing in. It's, it's ridiculous. It should be a basic skill that humans with these kinds of jobs should have. And all the complaints about electronic health systems, many of which are justified, they have lots of problems, but at least they will get rid of this ridiculous reliance on being able to read some scrawl. I mean, it doesn't make any sense in the middle of the night if a nurse and I are trying to decipher what some doctor in the day has written, because it can have major effects on someone's outcome. Sorry, that's uh, something I get a bit annoyed about. Uh, my handwriting is bloody beautiful. Quite Jolly Roger says, how do you deal with patients that you have to treat because of their noxious and self-destructive habits, heavy smokers, da da da, as soon as they're able to walk again, they're back in the smoker's corner. Hey, people are going to be people. Um, we treat them regardless. You know, it's their decision. I don't think we 
need to make it too easy, uh, as in, um, in Cambridge, in the hospital there, uh, there was a Burger King inside the hospital, and uh, it would be a very depressing sight uh, when you've spent ages fixing somebody's uh, circulatory system in their leg or something, and then they were in the queue for, for Burger King a couple of days later, but um, you know, it's their, it's their decision. Shamaski Simon, I'm interested in asking a couple of questions as a nursing student. You didn't ask anything though. Fidged spinner. If we evolved from monkeys, how come there are still monkeys? Why aren't they evolving into humans? I don't think there are monkeys. I've never seen a monkey. Have you seen a monkey? I mean, who knows? I think monkeys are just an invention. Nassim Sirhan, uh, sinus venosus, why? I like, I like the directness of that question. A good video can be made discussing the heart difference between species. I, I kind of did this with the six weirdest hearts in the animal kingdom video. It's a bit old, it's, it's uh, rough around the edges. But if you can tolerate that, uh, you can take a look at that video. Taran Pandey says, how do you remember what all you've studied since medical school uh, until now? Uh, I don't. Andrea says, have you ever seen one of your patients die? Yeah, I've seen many patients die. I work in a critical illness specialty. I've uh, done a lot of intensive care medicine um, and those kinds of deaths where there's a lot of input or, you know, in, in the theatre, the cath lab we call it, and where we do our procedures, uh, you actually witness the moment of death for other specialties who numerically have more deaths, like care of the elderly, for example, the deaths tend to be more expected, family tends to be around uh, at the moment of death and maybe not so much the clinicians. Nicanor Nunez, which is your favorite doctor? Manhattan, Strange, Lecter, Zoidberg, or Dre? Um, well, no contest there, Zoidberg. Uh, I'd probably add for honorable mentions, uh, Octopus, Doom, Scully, um, Fraser Crane, and uh, Seymour Beard Fassé. Jason says, why make videos when you can watch quality shows like The Expanse? Well, I made a video about The Expanse. Would you be willing to have your personality transferred into an AI? Well, again, Anmar Safadi, I have eight fingers, does this make me Spider-Man? Um, no, Anmar, we all have eight fingers and two thumbs. Finley Strachan, okay, this looks interesting. If one equals two minus one and three equals two plus one, what is the Latin name for a Brazil nut? Okay, that wasn't interesting at all. Well, considering the Romans didn't um, know of the existence of Brazil. I assume there's no word for Brazil, uh, but nut I know comes from nook or nooks because that is also the origin of the word nucleus um, in the middle of a cell. I'm trying to access the memory banks here, but yes, I think uh, it's because a nut or a seed uh, in Latin was nux, and uh, a small uh, version was a nu nucula, and hence nucleus or nuclear came from that. And I, I wonder which came first, nucleus in the atomic sense or the cellular sense? It must be the cellular sense because um, Van Leeuwenhoek um, was in the 17th century or something, wasn't he? So I think he first described the nucleus and then uh, Rutherford must have been the first to describe the atomic nucleus, or maybe it was Faraday, and I guess that was turn of the 20th century for Rutherford. So yes, that all comes from the same thing. How do you balance the crazy hours of life as a doctor and manage to produce content and seem to have a semblance of normalcy? It's just a semblance, Ethan. This is the internet. Don't believe anything you see. There's no normalcy here. Do I ever need histology again when working in a hospital? Yes, uh, if you're working in the histology department. Can you swim in the air? Yes, uh, I can. Um, can't you? L. Wilton651 asks, would you prefer to deal with more medically literate and educated or less? How often do patients think that they know better than the doctor in your experience? Um, actually, despite the impressions you might get from the internet, that's pretty uncommon in real life. And even when patients come in, we're armed with lots of information, the vast majority of the time, that's fine. I mean, I really enjoy patients taking an interest in their health and it can only be a good thing and I guess our role as doctors is to try and encourage people to go to reputable sources for that information and the problems come not from the patients themselves but from 
them maybe getting incorrect information. Can plants have cancer? Uh, good question. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, what was the worst medical treatment you had to perform? Uh, manual evacuation. Uh, this is something normally given to the junior most member of the team when someone is uh, very constipated and laxatives and enemas and things don't work. Someone needs to go in there, pull that stuff out. Um, I managed to delegate expertly by saying that I have short fingers compared to the long slender fingers of my female colleague at the time. And I said, look, it's, it's kinder to the patient than instead of my stubby fingers uh, that can't reach as far, you should really um, uh, take over this duty. And um, it seemed to work. Divan, tumiki amake bhalabasho? Nah. Lawrence on Twitter asks, what's the funniest misconception people have about doctors and medicine? I'm not sure it's funny, uh, but it's weird, is the belief that doctors uh, somehow have got treatments that we are keeping to ourselves and we are inflicting harm upon the population with things like vaccinations and holding back life-saving treatments is bewildering. To me, it's on a par with flat earth belief. It's just uh, really weird. I don't, know, I don't know what motivates these people or how they've come to that conclusion. Jonathan has a few questions about uh, tech in medicine. So privatization of knowledge, companies like Apple say they own all the data uh, that they collect using things like the Apple Watch. And what does this mean for the future? Uh, well, I will quote Eric Topol here, who is very well known in medical circles. He's an uh, eminent cardiologist who has written a lot about technology and medicine and things like that. Uh, you own your data and that should always be maintained. Uh, it shouldn't be uh, the, the property of an insurance company, a tech company, or anything like that. Um, and I think if we allow patients to take ownership of their medical data by making it more user-friendly, because it's just been spectacularly bad for decades in terms of the uh, IT level, um, then I think we can empower patients to uh, uh, manage their own health. I'm losing the will to live, so I'm going to stop there. If you're still watching, I don't really understand why. Um, get help. But thank you. Uh, and let me finish by saying thank you to everyone. This is a small milestone. Uh, I've got big plans for the future of this channel, uh, but time is always my problem. So I don't know how many of those plans will materialize. I've got a list of video topics, which currently stands at 112. These are just ideas that come to me. I drop them down and put some links and things. So when I say I'm planning a video about so and so, um, it doesn't mean it's going to happen anytime soon, but uh, there are lots and lots on the list, which is good. It's better to have too many than too few, but let's see how it goes. Thank you for joining me thus far and uh, look forward to uh, making more videos for you over forthcoming months and years. See you later.